So, basically, something or someone you've loved for nine years turns out to be a complete jerk. Yeah, that's what I feel after watching last night's episode of Game of Thrones. This is gonna be a renting video from Avenue X. If you are my subscriber, obviously you know what I do on this channel, but if you are not and you happen to click into this video because YouTube pushed it to you, yeah, this is just another renting video about Game of Thrones. And this channel usually does Chinese drama reviews and I don't think I ever actually talked about any English language based dramas on my channel, but hey, who cares, you know? Usually, if I talk about anything that's not in Chinese, drama or film wise, it's either it's so good that I have to recommend it to people, um, doesn't matter if it's in whatever language. Uh, the second reason is it is just so mind bogglingly bad that I just feel compelled to say something about it. It's been nine years. It, it was premiered in 2011. And back then, I was in a different country, living a different life. And for the past nine years of my life, Game of Thrones has been a part of it. Like obviously it's on and off, when it's airing, it usually is like more in your head and in your mind. And then when it's like during the time they were filming, you probably don't think of it that much. But still, I have been a Game of Thrones fan since day one. When I think back, in the past nine years of my own personal life, there are moments where my life is remembered because of Game of Thrones. So Game of Thrones as a show is integrated in my personal experiences and memories. Now I feel <laughs> uh, what they've done in season eight just kind of violated all my memories. I remember initially everybody was so blown away by this show, um, by the quality of the writing, by the quality of the production, the CG, the, the acting, the clever dialogues, the unexpected things. Obviously now, as we, we can pretty much confirm, it's mostly due to the genius of the original author. And when they were not out of original materials, they were okay. Most people would agree one to four season would be like the top notch writing and whatever TV productions in the world. Starting from five, things start to get a bit mmm. But five is still okay. I mean, compared to six. Six I can still accept it, but by the time it hit seven, I was just mostly just w watching it out of a habit because I've already been watching the show for that, that many years. It just doesn't make sense to give it up at that point. But season eight, I literally now don't care the last episode. Whatever happens, I don't care. I mean, I'm much more interested in Chernobyl, which is also an HBO drama that just came out last week. Now, Game of Thrones is just like pretty comparable to some shitty Chinese drama writings. Especially the past two episodes, episode four and five, are like really bad. Like starting from episode three, it was like already, huh? And then four was like, huh? huh? And five was like, give up. I give up. Like the moment Daenerys started to burn the city, I was like, okay, okay, I see where it's heading. I, I don't care now. I really don't care because they've just completely destroyed everything they've built up for the past eight years. Everything that, that's been dropped in there and you think is gonna somehow be reviewed at the end is just like thrown away because <laughs> I don't care. I feel like they just, the two writers of this show, they just want to get rid of Game of Thrones really quickly and then head over to whatever they're gonna do next. Good luck with that. I just hope anyone who wants to hire these two for any productions, give it a second thought because they clearly don't have any clue about how to write good stories. You know what season eight of Game of Thrones feels like? Here is my analogy. There are two students in the class. One of them is a genius a math genius, straight A student who can, who can every time answer correctly of any difficult questions. And there's another one who can't quite do that. So one day the teacher gives out a really difficult question and the clever, the genius student give it the correct answer. And the not so genius student peaked at the genius student's result. So he knows what is the final line in your math question. He knows what is the conclusion, but he has no time or he can't really remember all the steps of how to leading to there. So he just put down the conclusion and then make up whatever the steps and hoping the teacher would not have enough time to look at the paper and actually figuring out he's just faking it because it doesn't actually arrive at the conclusion the way that he writes it. This is what I feel like Game of Thrones season eight is like. They always claim, now this is their claim, the writers, that they know the 
book ending of the major characters, but they don't know how they get there. It's just very sad that this happens to the iconic show of the past decade, the most important TV show globally, because it pushed TV's production standard. People didn't expect a TV show can get this epic and this good. And before Game of Thrones, there hasn't been a show like it everywhere, anywhere in, in this world. And that's why people have so much emotional attachment and we almost kind of just believe Game of Thrones should be the best in the industry and, and then we get this. It's like the CG is still good, the production value is still high, but apart from that, the actual writing of the thing is just crap. When I say like Wandering Earth is a clip show, now I can just apply that to Game of Thrones season 8 and then it's completely fine. It's a clip show and it's a fan fiction clip show and it's a fan service clip show. Because we want to see Jamie and Brienne, you know, so they give it to you. Because we want to see Clegimbo, yeah, we give it to you. Because the fans want to see this, we give it to you. I'm like, don't you have any pride? Don't you have a little bit ego as writers to think, I'm going to write something that's so much cleverer than the fans can even think of. And they're gonna go, wow, it's so good. Like, don't you even have a little bit of the competitiveness of like, I'm not gonna do what you think I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do it better. I just wanna talk about a few things about the actual plot. So like, if you don't wanna spoilers, just don't watch the next part. What really annoys me of season eight? The logic that doesn't work in season eight, it just baffles me because like I believed because of past year's experiences that this type of just completely like doesn't make sense writing only happens in crappy Chinese dramas, but obviously it's not. Like Game of Thrones can do this too. In episode three, the thing that just made me go, okay, maybe this season is really bad. is the moment when Arya jumps out of nowhere. Nowhere apparently is an actual place now. And then stabs the Night King. I, I, I was like, what? What did you just do? Because, I mean, in your world setting, this is not possible to happen. Arya is an assassin, yes. She's very good at stealth, yes. But just before that scene, the, the scene that she is in previously, she was in a library and trying to hide from like what, nice zombies in there? And it wasn't easy, she almost didn't make it. And now you're in a place where it's surrounded by White Walkers and the Night King himself. And she can just come out of nowhere and nobody like even notice her, I'm like, within the episode, you're contradictory yourself. Game of Thrones is a show that does talk about magic. Like you have fire breathing dragon, you have dead people resurrection magic, fine. But apart from those two things, okay, most of the things are actually based on some medieval European kind of story and everything is pretty brutal and realistic. Like when you get chopped, you get chopped. <laughs> when you fall from high heights, you die and crash. And there's no Chinese wuxia magic where people can just fly in the air and define gravity. If your whole world, right from the beginning, is when people can fly in the air, then when Arya jumps out of nowhere, I might be able to accept it. But the thing is, it's not. You never said in your world people can come from nowhere. So now Arya is basically not just an assassin, but she's a magician and she has like quantum magic so she can create a black hole or something like she just come out of nowhere. From that moment, I was like, okay, okay, this is heading to a really bad direction. And right into episode four, when Jong just gave up ghost. Hmm? Is this what you do? Your pet, okay, and also like more than pet. And it's not even a dog, it's a wolf, okay? And then supposedly the Starks and the, the dire wolves, and you just gave him away? Didn't even pet him. Like, is it really that expensive to do that one shot? I was just like, Dumbstruck. And then in episode four, when the the Euron shooting the dragon down thing happened, that was the point where I, I was like completely given up on this show now. Because I know it's heading towards a really shitty direction. Again, it doesn't make sense. Danny was flying in the sky. She can see things miles away and she somehow doesn't see the ships. And then in that shot, it's pretty clear that those Scorpio are really strong weapons. The first shot hits the dragon and then takes the dragon down with an extra two shots. So that means dragons are not immune to it. It's very easy to shoot dragons, right? Right into the next episode, there are how many? Like a dozen, two dozens of Scorpios in King's Landing and none of it even managed to nick Drogon. 
they were firing at it and Daenerys just just like doesn't have a problem with dodging it and then burn them all like pff, whatever like you are the writer right you can decide whatever happens and everything that they've done in season 8 is just intentionally pushing Danny towards the mad queen scenario but they don't really know how to do it logically or that convincingly that makes sense I mean yeah if you want to push her to a mad queen you have to push her in a much more cleverer way than this and through the development of this character you know she has times when she gets a bit <clears throat> but Danny is fundamentally a good person she wants to break the will she wants to change the world she wants to make the world a better place and she wants to get rid of the tyrants of this world and somehow within a couple of episodes you intentionally set up circumstances to push her to do crazy things where those circumstances do not have solid reason to happen and even if it does happen the way it happens doesn't mean she necessarily needs to go crazy as you see in episode 5 and burn the city down because it's completely like pointless you already won at the point you already have the city Cersei is dead meat and then she decides to go and burn the city because well, it's it's really fun after that to rule a city that's completely ruined and take money out of your own pocket to rebuild it. That's such a clever thing for 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 a region for a ruler to do. I mean, monarchs are the most practical people in the world. They have to run a whole country. Like if it doesn't serve them, they're not gonna do it. So that is like the most stupid thing. It's it's it has nothing to do with being mad queen or whatever. It just means you have. Like Danny is being written as a completely dumb character. Like if you're sitting in that position, why would you do anything to burn down the city? You're you're gonna later have to rebuild <laughs> with your own money that you probably don't have. Like why? And then the Jamie and Brienne and Cersei line is just like, what the heck is going on? Like <laughs> last episode in episode four, when Jamie left, you still hope he actually is aiming at go and murder Cersei her himself. Obviously it's not. He just finds her and gives her a hug and takes her down to the cellar and then die there together. <laughs> you know the worst part? When I was watching that shot, when they were like embracing, right, in the foreground, like really, really close tight shot. And in the background, you see the cellar collapsing, like a bit, a bit by bit and closing on them until it just drops on to the head of them and then you know, go to dark and basically means they're buried. That shot just reminds me of so many crappy Chinese drama because like, right, they were there. They, they, they would not be able to know which part of the, the ceiling is going to collapse first. But somehow, magically, they found the perfect place to stand there just for the beautiful framing of that shot so that the ceiling collapses from the furthest point from them and then gradually moving towards them and drop on their head so that they can have that, that shot. And there are so many moments in episode 5 where it looks like we are just really want to recreate this concept design, this drawing, this rendering of an artist who was hired to do the artistic rendering of certain things in the drama. There are a couple of shots that read so much like we just have to make this frame happen therefore whatever we're just gonna write the story so that this shot happens. <laughs> This is like, I thought this kind of mistake can only be made by shitty, crappy, stupid Chinese writers who don't know how to tell a story. And obviously it's not. Game of Thrones can have that too. It is impossible to deny the iconic position Game of Thrones as a TV show has. It is not possible to deny how much it has meant to a lot of people. And it will always have its place, okay, in the, the, the history of dramas in the world. But now we all know it's going to end in a chapter where... This is the, the worst classic example of, of Lan Wei in Chinese. <laughs> rotten tail. So you have a gold gilded great head and then you have a rotten tail. Like the worst kind of decline of, of anything that can come from the highest point to the lowest. Like, yeah, it's going to be remembered as that. What's the purpose of Bran? I don't know. His whole existence is basically for the purpose of... of spoiler alert, Zhang, you're not really Zhang Snow. That's what his function is. He just had like the worst experiences of any young kid can have in their like what? From their 8 to their 15, whatever. Just for that one purpose. Fine. Danny has struggled from a girl who has nothing to a queen who has the possibility of changing the world. And then it's all for nothing. She's basically a mad queen <laughs> because the writer says so. John, 
you know, who's who, who's also had a very interesting and difficult arc. Now he's like pretty much a jacksu, and in Chinese, a white lotus. He's like a white lotus is whiter than a white lotus. Probably the only person that that is like like not completely failed your expectation is Arya. And Sansa is completely not likable now. Like she, like I don't even want to look at her because she's just like so mean. And she's like such a schemer but not really a good one. And well, well, that's like, yeah, that's the writer's thing. Tyrion, supposedly to be one of the cleverest people in the show, together with Littlefinger and various as the sort of plotting masters. His IQ is just eaten away. Basically useless and dumb. Like when you think about all those major characters, like they're, they're just completely failed any expectations of what you would have and what has been built up, okay, in the past years. <laughs> and Cersei, what's the point of Cersei existing in this season? Because she really didn't do anything. All she did was greeting the Golden Company. Oh, and the Golden Company! <laughs> Their captain doesn't even wear a hel helmet. Maybe they don't. I don't know. Like, I don't read into the lores of Golden Company, but the way he dies is so funny. It's like, yeah, we're the coolest army in this world, and we just we stand there for one minute. And we're apparently useless because the writer says so. Oh, and this one point of, of episode 5, I I'm just like, <laughs> that's like Chinese writer's way of dealing with stuff, is when everything is falling down. So when the stones are falling down, when the ceilings are falling down, it hits nobody. Like it hits nobody who are important. Because the writer decides, it's not your thing to die yet. Therefore, however you want to walk through the, the castle that's falling into pieces, no debris, no rock is gonna hit your head by accident. I mean, it can fall just right next to you, but it's not gonna hit you because it's not your time to die yet. Cersei, you know, like, it's not your time to die yet. You have to die in Jamie's arms. Therefore, um, it can drop all around you. It just doesn't drop on your head. And when they were on the stairs coming down and the click and bow thing is gonna happen at the moment, you see how many rocks were dropping down and it doesn't hit any of them. It just hits around them because, you know, they have other purposes to serve. There's another thing for you. So you need to die in the next thing, not this one. So Arya is running through the city and there's fire, there's stone, there's everything. You know, she just doesn't get hit in the way that will kill her. It just, just knocks her around, makes her really dusty, but she doesn't die. If you do it once, okay. You're doing it for like, what? A quarter, a third of the episode where all those important characters in your show are in this situation where they just can be randomly killed by whatever comes out because you decided, no. Did they watch a lot of Chinese crap dramas and get those ideas? I'm just like, it's so baffling. So that is my unscripted, not planned, just come out of frustration, ranting. I'm just so disappointed. It feels like basically something that I've loved for nine years or just nothing. It's just for nothing. It's like you've had a relationship with someone. Like I said in the beginning of the video, for nine years and you realize they're just crap. And you kind of have wasted all that time. You know, if if the spin-off series are gonna be written by those people too, like goodbye, <laughs> not even gonna look at it. And whatever they're gonna make in the future, not gonna watch it either. RIP Game of Thrones. To me, it would always be something that I think back that just gives me a really bad feeling. <laughs> I may go back to watch season one or two or three, you know, just for the fun of it. But anything past season four is like, no, not even gonna, not even gonna ever watch it ever. Cause it just makes it even worse when you know how shitty they would have tied everything up in the end. Thank you for watching this ranting video. If you 100% don't agree with me, and you think it's a brilliant show, and you think I'm just being mean, it's fine. It's your opinion. I respect that 100%. Just don't leave really insulting and really bad, like, you know, like those, you're stupid, you're shit, uh, that type of comments there, because I'm definitely going to delete that. And besides, there's no point. Like, you know, like just by saying that, it doesn't change anything. Uh, people are just going to have their opinions. Um, the people who don't like what has happened will always don't like it, no matter what you say. And the people that like it, you know, I respect. So you should go on and liking it, whatever other people say. It's just a show at the end of the day. It's just a drama. It's not gonna change the world in any significant way. It may impact personal life in very significant ways. The big general picture is you know, maybe in the parallel universe, they didn't do this ending. It was much better. And if you have access to that universe, 
please, please just, just, just email me and let me know what's the better ending because I'm really curious. Thank you for watching Avenue X. Uh, I'll see you hopefully in another video before this channel starts to go into a hiatus period. Uh, yeah, I'll talk about that in the next video, but see you then.